I just realized she has snakes all the way down here. She's got two snakes on her tail. And she's in heels. Even if you're only getting the bottom chest in Hydra, which is only like 1.6 million, you're still gonna get fragments for Mithrala. She's absolutely game changing. Go get her. A1 attacks twice, places poisons. A2 places a hex into AoE, increased debuff, and increased attack as well. Her A3 will cleanse the entire team as well as place the shield and a strengthened buff on them. Passively, whenever she is attacked by somebody who has a hex debuff on them, she has a 50% chance to place Petrification. Whenever an ally is attacked by somebody who has the Hex debuff on them, it's a 30% chance. Petrification is a debuff that basically turns you into stone for one turn and you can't do anything, you can't receive any buffs, the only way out of it is to wait your turn or get cleansed. And then on top of that, her passive also increases her resistance by the amount of accuracy that she has. And that's why oftentimes when you're going up against a Mithral in Arena, if she's built like a support champion, then she's going to have high resist. And then her aura increases ally accuracy in all battles by 80 points. She's an absolutely magnificent champion. So I have two builds for you. One is going to be a support general utility champion, and then the second build is going to be a nuke build. I went up against a Mithrala, not expecting anything much from her, but she hit me with that A2 and did a complete sweep. Unexpected. Mithrala is the type of champion that I don't really have a specific set for, although I'm sure she could benefit from pretty much any set you put her on. I focus mostly on just stats over sets for her. Her priority stats are going to be speed, accuracy, and resistance. And then survivability would be a good second. You want her to cycle through her moves quickly. Resistance, you're going to want to have naturally high because she is a great cleanser. And then you also want to stack accuracy so you can place those debuffs as well as increase your own resistance. So with her passive, she takes the accuracy and stacks it onto her resistance. So now when we add the resistance to the 506, 15, we're at 919. And then if we add the extra 80 points of accuracy, that bumps it up to 999, which is kind of annoying. And then you could even pair her with somebody like Lydia, who has a resistance aura of 100 points, only in Arena though, and that's easily over 1,000. So here we're going to start off with Kaja. We're going to do a speed boost. And here, what we can do is place the hex on everybody. So now they have the Hex debuffs. They have a chance of getting petrified, so they can't take any turns. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh, uh, he's in a stun set. I can show you guys the cleanse. Here we have block debuffs on with her A3. She's going to do all that. Here it is. There it is. Finally, we got the petrification. I can show you guys petrification. And he got petrified too. Going up against Mithrala can be quite the hassle because it's it's so annoying to have your debuffs cleansed and it's so annoying to get Hex put on you. Even up in Gold 4 Tag Team Arena and in Plat, I see a lot of teams still using Mithrala. Mithrala here, Mithrala there. Great for Faction Wars. And I also use her in my Hard 10 Spider Team. So she places the Hex, which means that all the damage that is put on one enemy will get spread out to the entire opposite team. And there is the prime example right there. She also helps with placing increased defense and increased attack. So she's doing two things here. If you wanted to, you could also run her in a wave clearing team because she pairs well with somebody like Seer, whose damage increases according to the amount of buffs that are placed. And on both of her moves, whether it's the A2 or the A3, she's placing two buffs up. She also pairs well with somebody like Taurus, whose A3, his god hand, is able to do more damage based on the amount of buffs that are on the team. So when it comes to Hydra, the thing that's exceptional about Mithrala is her AoE Hex. As we know, Hex spreads out the damage across the entire board for the enemies, so she places Hex on everybody. With the Head of Decay, you have an 85% chance to have your attacks redirected. You're not going to be able to single target the Head of Decay. Mithrala's Hex is AoE, you don't have to worry about that. And that specific thing pairs very well with somebody like Trunda. And of course she brings the cleanses, as well as the strength and the shields. An absolute grade A champion if you're looking for somebody to add into your Hydra team. Even as an endgame player, I still use her all around. Up in Plat, in my 3v3, in Hydra, this is my actual Hydra team for normal. And then this is sort of a new development, but in the Cursed City, she's actually a really good damage dealer for the fight against Amius. Not to mention she also brings extra accuracy and 
uses her cleanse whenever you might need it. So pretty much what she does here in this fight is she's going to use her A1 and place the poisons and that's going to do most of the damage against Amius. Now I actually haven't beaten Amius yet, I'm still learning the ropes, but I've seen other content creators use Mithrala and say that she's pretty good. All those poisons, each of those poison ticks is 21,000 points of damage. As far as using the Hex, I actually don't know if using the Hex will help or hurt in this fight. Just not sure yet. But here you can see if you need to cleanse, there's the cleanse, and then Uko will bring Pytheon back, but I don't think I'm going to win this one, so I'm just going to pop on out. We built Mithrala like a nuke, or we put her in lethal. I tried to get her in cruel also, just to get that extra 5% of ignore enemy defense, but without ripping gear off my other nukers, wasn't able to do it. So this is what I have currently. As it is with most of my nukers, I have about 5k defense, because her damage is based off defense, and then 250 minimum for crit damage. She is over crit, but I actually made the mistake of building her out first before switching the masteries, and that's why after I switched the masteries, there was an extra five. These are the nuking masteries. We're taking Helm Smasher, and then we're going down here for some damage mitigation as well as for counterattack. Around 220 speed is normally what I go for, but can't do it with this current gear. All right, I hope this Tormund isn't a nuke Tormund. Yep, that, uh, that Tormund's hitting kind of hard there, buddy. Dude, this guy takes forever to make a decision. Oh, Sun Wukong came in clutch there. And let's go ahead and take a strike at Siffy. 15 from Mithrala's A1. I don't know what EDK got hit for. All right, let's check the A2. 18 and something. I didn't see what that was. Let's do the cleanse. Start ripping at... Okay, nope. I didn't do it. Poke! 15 on UDK. And let's hit Siffy. Oh no! Rotos got the... What do you call it? The freeze. But we did 26 with Mithrala. 26 with her A1. Okay, so Elva goes first. So we have to worry about... Um, what's his name? Who is this guy? Ethos? That's not Ethos. I feel like I should know. What's his name? I always forget his name. Um, Blood Twin. Inithwe. Inithwe Blood Twin. We poked him to death. We poked him to death. Poke! And we killed the Neathway! 33! Roto smashing through stone skin here. And let's do a little bit of this. Uh-oh. Let's do a little bit of that. My heart is racing. I don't know. I might lose this. You know, the, the uncertainty of not knowing whether I'm going to win or not is making me kind of oof, you know? 
Let's see. Let's let's get let's try to get lucky and hope her A1 pokes at uh, Steltis. We did not get lucky, but we did almost about I'd say about like 40 to Duchess there with her A1. All right, here we go. My wife is here. I want to impress her. I hear her behind me. Here comes Sun Wukong, and we did it. We did it, guys. Hey, uh, let everybody know I'm number one. All right, number one. I'd say Mithral is the shit. Call the plumber. Or you can call Tuanarok instead. In this video, she hits for 127,000.